So I'll be speaking to you today on a subject I call Ask. A S K. Ask. And you can notice that I put it as an acronym. So let's read the popular scripture first from Matthew, where Jesus talked about asking. He says, Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And I remember in our conversations on this exposure on Ephesians, I think there was a day I also talked about this verse, and I was talking about the word ask. But look at this scripture, very popular scripture. Ask, and it will be given you. Jesus was the one speaking here. He did not say ask, and it may be given you. He does not say seek, and paraventure you may find. He did not say knock, and it, will, it might, depending, it be opened unto you. No. And this is a fundamental scripture when it comes to prayers. That tells me something. If Jesus said that I should ask and it will be given me, as was a statement of assurance, that tells me that God does not say no to any prayer that is prayed in accordance to, with his will. Do you know why God cannot say no? Do you know why Paul said all the promises of God are now yea and amen in Corinthians? Why did Paul make that kind of statement? There's a translation that says all the promises of God are yes and yes. How? What gave Paul the audacity to make that kind of statement? Paul made that kind of statement because he has a revelation that all the promises from the Old Testament that God has made, that God fulfilled it in Christ. So if God has fulfilled it in Christ, there is no way on earth and in heaven that God can say no. He can't say no to what he has already done. He can't retrieve what he has given. So anytime we are not receiving from God, it is not God's problem. It is not his problem. There are three people you must focus on. Anytime the things you trust God does not come. And this is so for us in the New Testament. Maybe in the Old Covenant, when they ask, they might not receive. When they ask, God might say no. When they ask, God might say not yet. If you will not see all those things we preachers say. We say no, when you don't receive from God, maybe God is saying, wait, it's not yet time. Oh, when we don't receive from God, maybe God is saying it's not yet time. You won't see it anywhere in the New Testament. Nowhere. It doesn't exist. So why are we preaching it? We preach it to give believers coping mechanisms. We preach it to give believers moral support, emotional support, whenever they don't receive anything from God. There are three things you must look at whenever you don't receive anything from God, and God is not part of the three. Never, ever, ever again say God did not give this to you, that God did not answer your prayer. It is not biblical. In the Old Testament, yes, but not after Jesus. It's not possible. The only thing you see in the New Testament regarding you not receiving your prayers when you pray is James that said, you ask and you not receive because you ask so you can consume it on your lust. But once you ask, ask for the will of God, God has said yes. Yes, it's yours. Because he told us he has given it to us. So what are the three things I want you to look at whenever you don't receive answers to your prayers? Number one is Satan. Satan, the enemy, the kingdom of darkness. That is the number one culprit. Satan does not want you to receive those things you've asked from God. Daniel is a good example. He was praying, praying in accordance with the word. He read Jeremiah and so when Jeremiah prophesied that they are supposed to stay in the land of captivity for only 17 years. Only. And he checked. Hey! It's almost 17 years old. And he's not looking as if this exile Captivity is abating. He went to God in prayer and said, Let's see in God's face. And the Bible says <laughs> that immediately he knelt down to pray. God sent an angel with the answer. Immediately. But we know that that answer did not come for 21 days. Why? The prince of Pesha held that angel and stopped him from getting the answers to, to Daniel. If Daniel did not know better, do you know what he would have said? God has rejected me. God has rejected Israel. God has not answered my prayer. 
Because we don't have a glimpse into what is happening behind the scene. We would have blamed God for what he did not do. And Satan likes it whenever we blame God for his activities. Satan is the number one person that stops us. I was listening to a preacher. And that preacher said something for so profound. In fact, he told two stories. He said there was a time when he was starting ministry that hunger was the mainstay in their household. Him and his wife. Hunger was the mainstay. That if they can't eat food, you can imagine that they struggle with their rent. So their, their rent was due. He couldn't pay. So the landlord insulted him. I said, you claim to be a preacher. You can't even pay, your, pay what you owe and all those things. He said, pained him. Pained him. He went back to God and said, God, but I prayed for my rent before it was due. Why didn't I receive it? So in the place of prayer, see, he prayed and prayed and prayed for about two or three weeks. The Holy Spirit whispered it to his heart. They see that the day you pray for your rent, I released it. But I can't send money, throw money down from heaven. The only way I can answer that kind of prayer is by speaking to someone to give you the money. He said, I gave you, I spoke to someone to give you that money. But see what is going on. The enemy has stopped that person from giving you the money. So pray against the enemy to stop whatever that person is doing or he's doing to that person to stop him from giving that money to release the money. He said, I pray. So they pray. Now one day he was in his mom's house helping the moms to fix something, the fence. And the mom was like, oh, do you remember your teacher? So so, so lady said, yes. Say, oh, that she called. I was asking after you. And I think he gave, he gave him her number that she said he's going to call you today. So the woman called him and was like, oh, can you and your wife come for dinner? So he was like, oh my God, we've not eaten for days. Like, this would be so cool. So he went for dinner with, with the, they went for dinner with a woman. And when they did that, the woman gave him an envelope and said, you should please forgive her. That the Lord spoke to her three and a half weeks ago to give you that money. But in, his, in her mind, she was like, why should she give this guy this money? That she has never given anybody money outside her ministry, outside her church. Why, why, why? It took three and a half weeks of battling with that thought. Finally, <laughs> she got a point to say, okay, I'm going to sow into him. Who was giving her that thought? You can now see, based on what he said God told him, that it was Satan that was giving, him that, giving her that thought. Stopped! The miracle God released. And I've heard several stories like that. One other guy, I heard him tell his story that he was believing God for a, for a property. Saw the property he liked. He went ahead, bought the property, but he was hoping that he will sell his property so that he can afford the mortgage for the new property. But what happened? Months passed, he could not sell his old property. So he was stuck paying mortgage for two properties and that was a financial burden on him. So he went to God in prayer. I was like, God, I need to sell that property. Help me sell that property. Blah, 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 blah. Cut, cut the long story short. He started praying. Praying against the enemy. Praying. I think he heard a message like this. He started praying against Satan. Stopping, whatever. He prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And finally... He sold that his property. So to the, the guy he sold the property to, when they are signing the documents, doing all those you know, necessary things to transfer ownership, the guy said to him, do you know, the first day you put a sign for sale for that house, I told my wife, that is our next house. He said that same day, he put his own house for sale, hoping that when his house sells, he will buy that guy's house. But he said, you know, for months, he could not sell his house. One issue or from the other, one issue or the other. The guy that finally said he would buy also said he needed to sell his own house to buy his house. So the thing prolonged. It was when the guy started changing his prayer from God, says, I need to sell this, I need to sell this. He started attacking the enemy that is stopping his house from being sold. He said, when he said that prayer, he didn't take one week, his house sold. He changed his prayer. At times we think it's God, it's not God. <laughs> also, somebody's hearing, hearing me today. God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. He has given it. He's a good God. He has blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. All you need to do is unlock it. From that place in the heavenly places down to you here on earth, Satan might put a roadblock. So you need to go after Satan. Go after Satan. <laughs> so when he changed his prayer and said, attacking Satan, Put him in his place. 
His house did not sell. He's the thief. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We must realize this. <laughs> we must. To kill, to destroy. And there are many stories like that. Satan is the first culprit. Always attack him. Don't be confused who is behind the scene. Attack him. Who is the second person that might be standing between you and your miracle? And this is very funny. The second person standing between you and your miracle and your breakthrough is you. You're the second person. You're on the list. <laughs> After Satan, it's you. You might be the one stopping your miracle, not God. How do you stop your miracle? Many ways. I can't get into all of them, but I'll just speak or some as the Spirit grants me utterance. One of the ways you might be stopping your miracle is that today you are in faith. <laughs> After you wait, wait, wait for the miracle, it does not come. You slack and you're out of faith. Don't you ever put a timing, a date on your miracles. Don't time your breakthroughs. And explain what I mean. I said, whenever you're trusting God for something, Father, like that rent thing now, I need that money before the end of the month, before 30th of June. Give me that money. I said, don't do that. Now, don't get me wrong. Is there anything wrong in saying that kind of thing? No. Especially if it is a prophetic word. If you receive clear prophetic word to make those utterances, please, by all means, make the, make the utterance. If a prophet or a preacher, speaking of the anointing, declares to you by so and so date, this will happen, receive it by faith. That is the prophetic word. That is different. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you, you are praying your petition and you are putting a time to it. See the benefit of setting a date because there's a benefit. You, it increases your faith and your expectation, which is good. You are expecting in faith so much. Ah, by so so and so day, God will do this. That is the only advantage of putting the date. But see the bad side of it. Because of Satan. Remember, I talked to you about Satan. Who will come and put a roadblock. Trying to stop that thing. Usually, when you set a date like that, the kingdom of darkness gets involved more. Your faith has increased. Your expectation has increased. Satan has put a roadblock. Somehow, somehow, he succeeded. That date came and passed. What usually happens to the people? Oh, they give up. And I'm going to tell you a story about my son. This just happened last, was it last week? Yes, last week. He went to school and took the two peas kit to school and lost it. So he, I went to pick them from school. He got into the car and he was wailing. And I saw why he was wailing because he understands that money has been spent. He has lost it once. He knows the pain. He's going, to, he's going to cost his parents. So he was crying, crying all through our journey, our journey back home. And I left him to cry for a reason because I wanted him, want him to feel the pain. But as we well, were getting home, I turned to him and said, but you've been listening to me preach. I've been teaching on a lot of things when it comes to believing, faith, prayers and all that. So you've been listening to me preach. And I've taught you guys at home about challenges. That when you have a challenge, what do you do? Do you cry? He said, no. I said, what do you, what did I, what did I teach you guys to do? He said, go to God. I was like, since you lost your PA kit and now, have you, have you gone to God? He said, no. I said, take time out now in the car and do it. And see what you do. He said, speak to your PA kit. That whoever took it from where you kept it must return it. That you must find it. That it is not lost. That you will find it. And believe and have that expectation. Remember that your expectation will not be cut off. And believe you'll find it when you go back to school tomorrow. He said, when you go back to school tomorrow, walk in faith. Go to the reception. I said, see, I'm looking for my PE kit. I lost it. Blah, 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 blah. That they should please see if they can ask around, whatever they can do to find it. And I said, when you go back to, to school, go to the, your form teacher. Tell the form teacher the same thing. They stand in faith. Expecting you will see it. The next day, very next day, very next day, I went to pick them from school. He came to the car smiling. Say, guess what? I was like, what? He said, you can be a kid. I said, you see, the word of God will not work till you work it. And we must learn this lesson as Christians. Whenever things are not going on the way you expect, 
don't go cry in here. I don't buy a door. No, 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 no. Don't do as if you don't have any hope. Don't do as if you don't have even the power and the equipment and the ability to change your circumstances. It is high time we start seeing ourselves as having the authority of a believer, which Christ gave us. We start seeing ourselves as people endowed with the power of God and start using those assets that we have. These are assets given to us by God. It is time we start using them. Start using them. Don't give up. Don't give in. Satan knows that we are like this. When things go wrong, go. That is why whenever we set a date for a miracle, the kingdom of darkness will do everything possible to make sure that miracle doesn't happen when you set it. So that you will fall into despair. You know, and you'll be like, oh, this is doesn't fake, doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, God doesn't do this. And it takes you back. It takes you back from this journey of faith. Satan knows. So that's why it is not good to set dates. However, there's a balance. If you sense the prophetic word or the presence of God, yes, you can. If a minister functioning under the prophetic says that in three days, so that's what happened. Believe it by faith. That is the prophetic word. What I'm saying does not include the prophetic word. On your own, you just set a date without any prophetic, you know, guidance. Don't do it. Satan will use it to affect and assassinate your faith. And there are many other ways we also stop our miracles. You live in sin, you stop your miracle at times, not always. Why not always? Because of grace and mercy. But sometimes it affects your miracle. If you're living in sin, if you're not treating people as God has told us to treat people, you might also stop your miracles. That doesn't mean that God is the one stopping it. Satan uses it, even with sin. Satan uses your sin against you. Satan uses your behavior against you. It is still Satan at the end of the day. Just that you are the one now opening the door for him to attack. The third person in this group are other people. But don't attack them. They are also instruments. They are agents of Satan. So at the end of the day, even other people, you have Satan behind you. So at the end of the day, it is still Satan. So why I say you are the second person is that don't use, don't allow yourself to be used as an instrument. Then when Satan is using other people to stop your miracles, like he was whispering to that woman's ears from giving that man of God that money for his rent, as he was working on other people so that they will not sell their house, you can see other people were involved in stopping that miracle from coming. But who was behind the scene? It is still the one who has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Go after him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, back to our ask. A-S-K. What does the first A stand for? The first A stands for ask. And I've explained that previously. I think I talked about that two weeks ago. So, What does Jesus mean by ask there? It means state your request. It is the same thing a waiter does to you when the waiter gives you the menu. God has done the same thing to us when he gave us his promises in his word. His word is like a menu of promises. He's now saying, ask, which one of these promises do you need? Be clear on it. And when I spoke about it, I talked about blind Bartimaeus, who screamed, oh, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus asked him to come. And you would have thought that Jesus could see he was blind and immediately lay hands on him and say, receive your sight. He did Jesus asked him to ask. He said, what is it you want the son of David to do for you? Ask. So asking is not bombarded. Father, I do this. No, no, no. Asking is standing in faith to say, Father, 
according to your word and your promise in the book of this chapter, this verse, that, I ask for my rent. So you are specific. So asking there is actually be specific with your request. Seek. S is seek. What does seek mean? <laughs> seek are those questions you have. I talked to you about questions. When I spoke to you how, about how to be led by the Holy Spirit through our thoughts. This is something you must learn and make it a lifestyle. Always carry questions in your heart. That is seeking. Seeking. Another word for seeking there is searching. You are searching to know. Paul talked about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. That is a spirit. Searching to know what is in the heart of the spirit. Your human spirit is searching to know what is in the heart of the Holy Spirit. Questions. Those requests that you make, you want to know. Prayers like the prayer of inquiry. The first word, Acts, they're talking about petition and supplication. Remember, when we looked at the armor of God, Paul talked about praying all prayers. The A they're asking is petition. You're specific with what you want. The sick there is another kind of prayer. It's a prayer of inquiry. You're seeking to know. You're asking questions about your future. What to do. Where to go. Prayer of inquiry. That is sick. Knock. Usually means a lot of things. But the one I want to point out today is anytime Satan closes a door, knock it down. <laughs> knock. Anything that is closed, you cannot penetrate. Knock it down. Knock it down. Knock it down. Say knock and then be open. And that kind of prayer is the prophetic prayer. You foul spirit in the name of Jesus out. Knock it down. Every closed door, you knock it down and you go through it. Knock there might also be you are praying and believing for the next level. But that level is closed. The lid is over it. The ceiling is over it. Knock it down and command it to open. Jesus said, everyone, everyone who ask will receive. Everyone who seek will find. Everyone who knocks, the door will be open. I wanted to point that out. Everyone, 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 no exception. All right, go to the next slide. So, Jesus told the story before he said this. What was the story? So, the story of a friend. The prayer of opportunity. A friend came to him at midnight. He didn't have anything to give to the friend. So he went to his neighbor and was knocking, 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 knocking. Disturbing the man till he opens the door. So that's why Jesus said, told this story that he now said, ask and it shall be given you. What is this story about? Persist in knocking. Now, there's the last section of the knocking I want to talk about. This knocking here or oh, this prayer here is talking about when we pray for another person. The intercessory aspect of prayer. So the ask is petition, supplication. Seek is inquiry. Knock is prophetic. And on one side, like this story now, he's talking about intercessory. The man that went to his neighbor was not asking for bread for himself. That would have been petition. He was asking for bread for his friend that came visiting, for the visitor. So the man was the intermediary between the giver and the one we need. That is intercessory prayer. That means whenever you are standing in the gap for someone, do what? Keep knocking till you receive. You don't stop. Keep knocking till you receive. Two, whenever you are seeking, requesting something from another human being, this is not to God now, from another human being, be persistent. Don't give up. They tell you, go, we won't do this for you. Go again. They say, no, you don't qualify. Go again. Keep going. Keep going and don't give up. That's another knocking. Aspect to this knocking. Don't give up. Whenever you are making a request from an organization, a company, or a, an individual, don't give up. That is what Jesus is saying here. Don't give up. See what Jesus said? Say, though the man will not rise to give you because you are his friend. That person will not do that thing you're asking for because he knows you. He will not do that thing you're asking for because you're his friend and his acquaintance. Jesus said he will not do that because of your relationship. At times we count on our relationship with someone thinking that because of our relationship that person will do that. Yes, at times it works, but at times it doesn't work. 
I've seen friends betray friends. I've seen friends let friends down. But just is pointing out something. He said, even though your relationship is not strong enough to receive from that friend, there is something that is strong enough that will weary that friend into submission. He says, persistence. They are called importunity. He said, for his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he wants. In other words, whenever you are praying the prayer of intercession, don't give up. Persist. Don't give up. Don't give in till you receive the answer to that prayer.